Here we go ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to the first match preview of this season. Yes indeed, it's the big one, Chelsea's first Premier League match, away at Old Trafford, Chelsea versus Manchester United, Frank Lampard versus Ole Gunnar Solskjaer epic scenes indeed but before we do get into today's video i just want to say a big thank you to you lot for helping me reach over 10,000 subscribers on this youtube channel huge landmark very very pleased and humbled with this before the season starts as well 10k in just this summer that's an excellent landmark for me and if you want to see what all the fuss is about and you have not subscribed please do subscribe to my youtube channel hit the bell notifications icon and if you want to help me out please like this video because I hope you like this video. <laughs> so this fixture is the fire rubber of the weekend. Chelsea versus Manchester United. Two new coaches, well, relatively new coaches. Two ex-club legends, well, Solskjaer is relatively an ex-club legend, not like Frank Lampard is to Chelsea. Regardless, two young coaches that are legends for their clubs, matching up against each other with their own respective unsettled sides. I've got a lot to talk about in this match preview today, so let's get into some analysis. All right, so it is the first game of the season and teams and coaches and play styles and everything changes throughout our domestic season. So there's gonna be a bit of spec speculation in this preview about how the teams are going to play and what personnel they'll use because let's be honest I've only got pre-season as a sample size but I will be talking about certain aspects of the games like individual battles and how I think the game could pan out before I do get into the sort of tactical approach and formations and personnel I'm going to pull up this stat now from premierleague.com as you can see on the graphic this is the head-to-head -head record between Chelsea Football Club and Manchester United in the Premier League era so Chelsea have won more games kept more clean sheets and scored more goals than Manchester United. Pretty decent, huh? See, the thing is, Chelsea have always been a thorn in United's side in the Premier League era. Now, this predates Roman Abramovich or the takeover. Chelsea were just always good against Manchester United, and United didn't like that because obviously they're the Premier League behemoth, the big old team that no one could beat, or the team that dominated through the 90s and early noughties and all that. Chelsea would always put a performance in against Manchester United. But historical success aside, this is one individual game. And like I said, there's a lot of unsettled aspects to both teams here. And in today's modern football climate, you never know what the hell is going to happen. The bookies have made Manchester United clear favourites. And understandably, they have a more settled coach that's been there for a while. They're at home at Old Trafford. They don't have a transfer ban. They've made decent investment. They've spent like, what, 130, 40 million? Uh, so they haven't got a transfer ban. And unlike Chelsea, they're not missing their best player. You know, Chelsea do have a transfer ban. They're missing Eden Hazard. Frank Lampard has just arrived at the club. He hasn't got that much managerial experience. You know, there's a lot going for United in this fixture and not a lot going for Chelsea. But let's talk about some formations and tactical stuff and personnel, etc. Right then, I pulled up a graphic beside me for formations. Now, I think personally, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to play a 4-2-3-1 regardless. Now, I think that because that's what he's been doing in pre-season and it's quite like a sensible Premier League formation that for the first game, I think he's going to deploy. So in these two lineups, it's only a personnel difference and not a shape or formation difference. In both lineups, I have the same back five because that's what's most sensible looking at the personnel. So there's David De Gea in goal, Aaron Wan-Bissaka at right back, Luke Shaw at left back, and the centre back pairing of Lindelof and new boy, world record signing, Harry Maguire. In the first lineup, I have Pogba and McTominay in the engine room, as this is a deep midfield two that Solskjaer has already deployed in pre-season. No Matic, you notice. Martial will be in the left wing position, Mata will be in the number 10, and interestingly, I've put Diogo Delo in the right wing position here behind Marcus Rashford as the lone striker. Now, I've moved Delo here because Solskjaer's deployed Delo as a right winger or a right forward before last season. And for the opening game of the season, I feel like this might offer him a bit of more of security. You know, he's obviously going to play Wan-Bissaka as right back. So maybe to be a little bit more cautious, I see him playing Delo there. I've also put Matter in the number 10. A lot of United fans think or they feel Matter's had his time at United and he should go and they should, you know, play somewhere else there. But Solskjaer does trust him as has recent Manchester United coaches and I do see him playing against his former club as a sensible selection in this game and he's he's 
probably played his best football at United in that number 10 position. So I can see it happening. In the second formation, I have the same back five, like I said, but in the engine room, I've got Matic and McTominay. Now, I think McTominay will start regardless, but United fans tell me Nemanja Matic has been awful for Manchester United of late. And fair enough, I can believe it. He's quite slow and maybe his best days are behind him. And although I think a lot of United fans would like to see him dropped, and he could well be dropped, if, if Pog was pushed forward into the 10, like I have him in the second formation or second lineup, I see Matic and McTominay being the more sort of sensible, good on the ball, deep engine room too. Martial would stay on the left wing, Rashford would stay as the lone striker, and Mata is deployed on the right wing, which United fans might not be happy to see. To be honest, I think this isn't the kind of lineup United fans would want to see um, because. Matt is probably best in the 10, he's not great at right wing, and also they probably don't want uh, Matic playing in centre mid. Still, it seems like a sort of senior, sensible lineup to just settle the team into the first fixture of the season, and he knows that Nemanja Matic and Juan Mata will both know Chelsea very well, so maybe they might feel it's sensible using them, who knows. Obviously, I'm just speculating a little bit, but I think I would not be surprised, certainly, to see those two lineups. Right, so how will Frank Lampard set up Chelsea? in this game let's switch the graphics around so as you can see I've got a couple of different Chelsea formations and lineups here that Frank Lampard might deploy in this game like United I think Chelsea will keep the same back five regardless I think it'll be Ariza Balaka in goal I think it'll be Emerson at left back as Balaqueta at right back and the center back pairing I think will be Zuma and David Luiz now it's also important to note that in these lineups I'm assuming Kante is fit and ready to go I know he hasn't featured much in preseason but I think personally that's due to a rehabilitation to make sure he's fit and fighting for this game. So, assuming Kante's fit and also assuming Willian's not ready to be integrated into the team, now I'm not saying Frank Lampard should pick Willian, I'm saying that maybe he would provided he actually played some preseason games and got integrated into Lampard's system, which he hasn't. So I don't think Willian will start and I'm assuming Kante will start. So anyway, in front of the Jorginho Kante double pivot, I say an attacking midfield three of Pedro on the right, who's featured a lot in preseason. Barkley in the number 10 role, who's arguably been Chelsea's form player in preseason, and on the left wing, Christian Pulisic. Now, as the lone striker in this system, I've gone with Olivier Giroud, which makes the most sense, especially earlier in the Premier League season. He's so experienced in the Premier League, and, you know, if he's going to be coming up against Harry Maguire and Lindelof, he's going to need to have that sort of Prem knowledge and strength, and it just makes so much sense to play Olivier Giroud in this game as a lone striker, but also the earlier games in the campaign. Right, so the second formation and lineup I've chosen would be an incredibly, well, not incredibly, but certainly very daring from Chelsea and Frank Lampard. I've gone for the 4 4 2 diamond. Obviously, we've seen this in pre season to work often, that really great effect. It's a, it's a bit of a risky roll of the dice in the Premier League, it's certainly against Manchester United, but it could be incredibly successful, and I'll get to that. But the personnel would be, Jorginho would step out and it would be Kante at the base of the diamond, Mason Mount would be on the right, Kovacic would be on the left, and Barkley would be at the tip of the diamond, again essentially playing the number 10, behind uh, striker partnership, Batshuayi and Abraham. Why is this risky? Well, it's risky because you drop all your wingers. You don't, you know, Pedro and Pulisic might feel quite hard done by here. But give me a second to think about it, right? So if Chelsea, Chelsea to great success, had Pulisic playing on the shoulder and running in behind, but remember, now he'd be running in behind or trying to run in behind Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Now, Aaron Wan-Bissaka was statistically the best defensive right back in Europe last season, and he's looked absolutely beast in preseason for United. And for someone like Pulisic, who does look an absolute excellent talent, settling into this team, settling into this league, I think it might be asking a bit much because although he's good at getting in behind and then getting into one-on-one -on -one situations, he has to get in behind Wan-Bissaka and then, you know, there's Harry Maguire to stop him getting into a 1v1. It looks a bit difficult, right? Now, Manchester United's biggest weakness at the moment is their midfield. Their midfield is their soft underbelly, right? So, if Frank Lampard deploys this diamond midfield, it could, maybe, 
totally dominate Manchester United. You basically have really talented number 10 style players like Mason Mount and Ross Barkley combining with the forwards and causing loads of problems in terms of you know offensive passages of play combinations and etc stuff like that but you'd have players like Kante and Kovacic running around carrying the ball sweeping up intercepting that diamond could completely run the game essentially it's just worrying when their flanks are defended by Luke Shaw and Aaron Wan-Bissaka and now essentially their whole back line's pretty good the good news is Lampard doesn't have to stick with one game plan he can have both formations in his head ready to deploy in this game and switch when he needs to all right I want to talk about how this game could go down a little bit more so that's enough of the formation analysis so rather frustratingly Manchester United do have a good defence now. Harry Maguire is a very, very good defender. Aaron wan is obviously excellent. And Luke Shaw being restored to the side with Lindelof, who's probably their best centre-back in the previous regime, it's pretty solid. And if David De Gea has finally found some confidence, that is a very strong back five. So that's why I was saying maybe win the game in midfield, play the diamond, play against Manchester United's weak midfield, and play down the middle and try and combine. This idea obviously comes from a concern that Manchester United won't let Chelsea play with width, or at least a success. But playing the 4-4-2 diamond doesn't guarantee success. We don't know if uh, Tammy and Michy can combine well enough yet to score goals themselves. And also, playing that narrow does leave Chelsea vulnerable uh, for wide attacks against themselves. Obviously, Luke Shaw can get forward very, very well, and people like Martial getting in behind suddenly you know, not playing with width to be clever can actually become a weakness. And the diamond doesn't necessarily defend well with width, so it's a difficult one. The thing is, what could give Chelsea the edge is they look like they're accomplished in two completely different approaches here. Like, we've seen Solskjaer and other coaches, you know, change formations, but when it comes to Chelsea, the diamond approach and the 4 2 3 one 4 3 3 it's completely different with different personnel. Therefore, it could be the ace up Frank Lampard's sleeve that he could change. He could go into this game a little bit wary, see something's not working, then switch with maybe two or three subs max, obviously. Switch the whole formation, the whole tactical approach, and sucker punch Manchester United. It's just what does he decide to start with, or when does he switch, and does he overcook the formations and tactics, or whatever. Still, I think personally, the options, which Frank Lampard definitely has, especially in midfield, could give Chelsea the edge in this game. But of course the onus is on Manchester United to win this game. They invested money, they don't have a transfer ban, they haven't lost their best player, they're at home, they've got a settled coach. You know, they, they'll be expected to win this game, which might suit Chelsea, you know. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts, potential formations, personnel, uh, lineups. I want to hear it. Get down in the comments. And also, like this video if you've enjoyed the video. And remember to subscribe if you're new and you haven't yet subscribed. All right, guys, thanks so much. Remember, if you want to have your question answered on an exclusive Q&A video, you can become a patron to my Patreon, where you pay $1 a month and I answer your questions in a video that's exclusive to my patrons. The link is down in the description and you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. That's it guys, I hope you've enjoyed this preview today. Enjoy the football and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby